This conference will now be recorded. Hi guys, good morning. So uh, today we will be continuing on our Linux commands. Since yesterday uh, we have gone through the Linux kernel and what is operating system and how we can SSH to the or how we can communicate to any operating system which is based out of uh, a Linux flavor. Right, our Unix flavor. So now let me just launch out a new EC2 machine. So yesterday we have seen uh, Ubuntu. Now we'll try to open Red Hat. So I'm proceeding with the default configurations. Uh, Rajendra, uh, in real time, uh, if uh, any application from on premise, if, if it is onboarding to cloud, so uh, we have to gather some prerequisites, right? So after collecting all those, we were directly uh, in launching the instance from EC2, or else we will contact any cloud engineering team. Uh, so uh, to procure in this all case. These exactly so definitely uh, when we are trying to migrate uh, the infra on premise to any cloud so definitely there are many measurements uh, we cannot directly go and uh, um, what do we say launch the ec2 compute engines so rather what we do so we have to create our local uh, on premises virtual machine machines as an uh, amis uh, typically in AWS uh, since it, it, just before uh, one or two slides before we have used Red Hat Enterprise Linux 
so, and there are many other likewise we can create our own customized image So uh, with our own customized image, which is there in on premise. As I said, uh, yesterday I have shown you about uh, my local virtual uh, virtual box. So just imagine that that is my uh, that is our on premise. And if you want to export this to uh, any cloud. Yeah, in any way we know in our on premises what is our configuration and what is our operating system and on this particular dependencies and the basic uh, the hardware configurations everything we will be having a handy of every environment and each and every virtual machine from on premise environment so uh, from these uh, virtual machines we need to generate uh, i there is a tool called a packer. So what this HashiCorp packer will do. So uh, it will generate uh, respect to the machine image. Uh, if you want to generate a machine image for um, from VM. From virtual machine to any sort of a medium like a cloud providers, either GCP supported uh, images or AWS supported video uh, images. So it will convert to the understandable format of. AWS, AMIs, or GCP, or any Azure. So this is how uh, they used to convert and they used to utilize it uh, while launching and or migrating. And sometimes uh, what they do instead of a converting or instead of converting our local on-premise environment, so uh, simply they will just go and uh, create a new EC2 machine. Yeah, obviously. We need to contact the cloud administrative team for the respective uh, credentials like I am roles not like everybody is having the new machine launching permissions or not like everybody's having other network creations and VPC creations in a high level. So for that anyway, we have uh, some sort of a dependency and a user management or role management with the cloud team and the followed by Mostly the migrations will happen with a cloud dedicated team. But some situations like your startup send all. I mean, a Dev DevOps guys used to manage the migration part as well. So uh, if that's clear, I will proceed further. Yeah, it is clear. And uh, uh, whatever the application dependencies or environment related dependencies, they used to install. If we are launching our EC2 machine uh, only for cloud migration uh, on, from on premise to cloud migration, uh, basically there are uh, um, service provider related like uh, AWS, they have some services to migrate on premise to cloud. Since that is their market, and if they want to capture, they will uh, assist you. Assistors on that part. There are many tools, uh, services for respective cloud providers.
also yes, rajendra yes, yesterday please. yeah please yesterday you have uh, connected to uh, this uh, ec2 instance from ubuntu right from your local ubuntu uh, my macbook to ec2 instance the ubuntu is in ec2 okay so in... we can connect it we can connect to our ec2 machine from putty or else from command prompt we can connect exactly uh, whatever i have mentioned any system that has installed ssh client in my case uh, and as you know mac is also an a unix distribution so it has a by default uh, ssh server or a client installed not a server it is a client as such now you can see i'm using ssh command that means somewhere in my utility ssh was already installed okay so in our uh, in our case we are using windows so we can connect yeah. from git bash or else from command so typically uh, through git bash also we can connect or else i have mentioned one tool um, mobile xtem so you can download the mobile xtem if you see this is ssh client okay so from windows machine uh, you can install and you can maintain a multiple sessions so instead of a putty uh, i recommend to use uh, mobile xtem and even uh, first initial days one week or 10 days for regular practice you can try to utilize so, putty uh, then yeah from, please from putty if we want to connect uh, we have to give the public ip address and uh, it will ask for any password or else we can give the key which uh, if you provide a key data. yes if you provide a key as i said for connecting to any of the machine we need to provide a username at ip address so what that means i want to communicate to a target machine which is remote machine with my user or with some other user so by providing my authentication key which is a pem key or a ppk so with that ppk or a pem key i want to authenticate my remote machine with this particular user ec2 or user or ubuntu user or with my uh, own user so that is how we used to communicate uh, for this red can you please uh, show uh, how we connect from putty oh putty right so uh, can any one of you share your screen might be satish is having the share option i think everybody uh, could you please try no, uh, it, it is not enabled for me oh satish so uh, can you try anyone is having access let me check i think you have to give some permissions to share or screen yeah so now now i have given given you the share option yeah so you want me to open booking yes okay so now i have open so we need to provide a ip address let me just share you the ip address okay it 
the the ip address is for uh, red hat or else the yesterday you going to win uh, this is for uh, no this is for a new machine which i have just launched so uh, mm -hmm. in a starting session in a starting i have launched a new machine which is a red hat yesterday we have launched a ubuntu okay. last day's mission uh, i have already terminated now we can check okay. in our chart do you have a amazon account yeah i have created uh if so uh, could you please use your account because uh, again i need to share my pem key okay. As many of you guys doesn't know about a git bash, so uh, once the Linux commands are over, or maybe end of this session, we will be giving an introduction about uh, what is a git and uh, <coughs> what are the tools to be installed for managing the git or working with git. So from here, we need to launch a new instance. Mm -hmm. So and if you see there, by default, it is trying to look for quick quick start. And if you have any, uh, you can go with AMI, AMI, and uh, AWS Market and Community Editions uh, in a left side. Yeah. The list okay. is showing is a quick so my AMIs and if you want to look for a custom AMIs which we have designed you can upload it directly here so we have to build our VM to a pack with, a, with the help of a packer to support AMIs and so then we can AMI, utilize so what yeah. exactly mean by AM? Okay, Amazon machine image. Amazon machine image. So it's uh, it is something. If you try to install any operating system in your local machine, or uh, let's say imagine you you bought a new laptop which is not a Windows operating system, and you want to install Windows 11 on top of that, and <laughs> what we used to do earlier. We used to get an ISO file or we used to download from the internet the ISO file and uh, we need to boot it to the new laptop via pen drive or we need to flash okay. it. So that's how we, we need a base image the operating okay. system image. It's the same. Okay. The base image here is Red Hat Enterprise Linux or Ubuntu or SUC Linux. So these are some okay. basic uh, base images. Yeah, please. So, what okay. is there any difference between this uh, Red Hat, Ubuntu? Why are we, I mean, majorly use Red Hat instead of those? Uh, because Red Hat is having some enterprise uh, support since it is an enterprise one, 
where we can enable the licenses for Red Hat machines. And then come to coming to Ubuntu. Ubuntu is completely open source. So uh, there is no maintenance fees and everything. And uh, it is a freely available. So uh, nothing major differences. So, so there are some administrative commands. Oh, in Ubuntu, we use a apt get and we, in Red Hat, we use a uh, m commands to update our packages or install any new packages or remove any new packages. So user management, everything is the same. Apart from uh, 10 to 15 percent of a variation. From security purpose, is there any differentiation in, for Red Hat? Yeah, obviously, uh, the Red Hat customized packages, since they are providing enterprise support, they used to provide uh, in a standard way of a security patches. And if anything goes wrong uh, while doing a patching and our machines gone wrong or gone down. So those kind of a support we can get immediately. But when it comes to open source tool, not only Ubuntu, any tool uh, if you're using in open source, so every responsibility like a uh, whole responsibility is it on our on our hand we need to take wow. care of uh, a failure cases and uh, if anything happens we need to go through the google and we need to go through some open source platforms and get the solution from there it's on us total the maintenance so when we depend on enterprise tools not only a red hat for any situation uh, our any other tool, if you see like a, a Ubuntu, not a Ubuntu, what do we say, Talend. There are other tools, RPA, Robotic Process Automation, somebody using um, Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere. Mm -hmm. Those are enterprise paid tools. So, and there are some open source as well. The risk factors. So if you, if you are, uh, want to maintain your infrastructure cost effective, and uh, we can go, we, we always use uh, open source platforms. Mm -hmm. Open so source doesn't mean people... that, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah I have understood like. Uh... Good. So here it is due to micro. Uh... Yes. Uh, we are using a free tire now. For a practice yes. purpose okay. and uh, uh, when Barth uh, will, uh, will start the session uh, he will explain what, what are the types of uh, EC2 instances there are multiple okay. types of uh, instances when we want to as I said this is a minimalistic hardware so configuration or else resource configuration with 1 gigs of our RAM and 10 gigs of or 8 gigs of our internal storage EBS volume okay. So, and uh, so, one core of a CPU. So these are a basic configurations, uh, very minimal configurations. Okay. And in real time, we don't use a T2 micro, mostly T2 okay. medium. Uh, it will start from medium, as a mostly. Okay. The fourth one. Is there one. any name, uh, naming convention why it is T2? Uh, even I'm not sure uh, because uh, okay. AWS uh, I was not well watched so I okay. just used to handle the or launch any new uh, machines whenever I need it okay. so we have a cloud dedicated team they used to maintain okay. an infra and they used to take decisions on uh, when to use or what okay. so uh, Bharat will explain everything in detail that uh, maybe in okay. the next week okay so from here we should uh, click on next configure instance details. Yes. Okay. And here number of instances. Okay. As uh, all these are uh, by default one, we need not to change anything. Yes, the default configurations. Okay. Next here, add storage. Okay, it is 10 GB. Next, add. Okay. Next, add. Yes. 
so we what is tagging here yes uh, the tagging is something to identify my ac2 instance as i mentioned okay. if, if an organization is having a more than 100 or a 200 or a 300 500 or more than a thousand virtual machines which are ac2 machines which are running in a cloud and how do we identify your machine let's say this is a qa login service this particular instance is qa search service and a value we need to mention value like how we, uh, uh, you can mention instead of a renuka you can mention uh, env total okay, uh, just what? remove everything env yeah remove remaining okay yeah and the value uh, will be test And you can add multiple tags like a uh, OS flavor. OS is a red hat. Okay. Likewise, so identify, or, uh, identify. Okay. So out of a thousand, when we when you just log into your AC2 dashboard, it will display thousand virtual machines. So and you don't want to see those thousand virtual machines. Instead, okay. uh, you can directly filter them, like how okay. we used to search. Okay. Here, here, room. No need to add, uh, since now we are just uh, trying to uh, do the SSH. Okay, review and launch. If you want to open any new port, we need to add the security groups or we need to enable. Okay, like you said, uh, HTTP port system. Yes, Those yes, oh. yes. And okay. not only HTTP or HTTPS, any custom port you want to open on a machine, uh, you need to enter in inbound and outbound rules. So where we use the security groups, uh, Rajendra, I mean, so typically on a security groups uh, if you see on our uh, on premise infrastructure or when we are mm -hmm. using our uh, organization computers we used to see these uh, firewall configurations firewall rules they don't allow to download some particular things or they don't allow to browse uh, google so what our browser is doing it is trying to communicate to http dot uh, uh, youtube dot com so they used to block it directly from here or something so, if you want to yeah please any i mean uh, if our uh, website is uh, wants to access by uh, other open source uh, there should be some certificates right so those will come from the security no certificates are different uh, uh, that is a different thing so uh, yes it comes under security but not but not with the security groups so security okay. groups uh, is talking uh, we'll talk about uh, what are the ports has to be enabled and how a traffic has to come i mean on which port my request and response has to has to be validated in this case at 22 as a request is getting to my machine from any remote machine, I'm getting my SSH is listening on a 22 port. And so another case, let's say tomorrow I have installed a Tomcat machine, Tomcat a server. It will be running on 8080 or 80 only. And Jenkins is running on 8080 and I need to enable that. I need to modify security groups inbound rules. And what okay, I can do port. in a real time yes yeah go ahead sorry uh what we can do in a real time for uh, every environment uh, for a dev we have some set of uh, security group rules so for any instance which is getting created 
inside my dev environment i will use the same security group uh, even we I, I can be having multiple security groups like in dev for a ui i will be having security dev security group one and for controllers like our application deployments i will be having a different security group and for databases i might have a different security group because these three layers these three tier applications will rely uh, will sit on a different levels in a, when we host our application in a public domain we don't expose our database we don't expose our code uh, the logical code or a microservice code rather we just expose our front end application so uh, the security group send all will be uh, discussed in depth in ac2 dedicated uh, amazon aws session bharat will take care of that okay uh, this is okay. just to give you i mean uh, the to clear out your basic doubts in what is a security group send all okay okay i have downloaded the key pair here uh... So, can I close it? Yeah, please. Okay. Then launch. Yes. Yeah, need to acknowledge existing one. There is the same, right? You have generated. Yeah, it, yep. it is showing the RSA. Yes. Not an yes. And just to click, uh, yes. And now you can see here uh, we have an instance ID. And what mm -hmm. if you have a thousand number of instances? So to just filter it out, uh, we are okay. using those tags. Uh, we can use that env colon in search bar. So env equals yes, and now you can see you have got a list. You can search for env colon dev. Since we don't have a dev, it won't display anything. And remove that test one. Okay. So, uh, what we used to do uh, for uh, lower environments, I used to search directly here env, um, my QA or U8 or a sandbox. We have multiple sandboxes. I used to search with the sandbox, and uh, once I got a result of uh, 20 to 30 virtual machines or uh, EC2 machines. And I will just look for a health status or anything which I want to modify or if I want to terminate one of the instance. And even in a further, we can segregate with a service name. Now this case, uh, we have launched an EC2 machine only for the purpose of doing SSH. In tomorrow, when we are deploying any application inside this EC2 machine, what we will do, we can just name it, we can create a new tag with a service name service name followed by the value value is something login or a search or any other service identity whatever the microservices we are building or deploying with the name we can launch a new instance or we can tag our instance so that anytime we can list out with the name of service or with the name of environment Okay. Yeah. So I have copied the public IP address. Okay. And you can see there over there connect option on the top, so that you you will understand better. Top connect. connect. Okay. Yes. Okay.
Well, so we have to take this only, right? If you have SSH client, we can take the third option or something. Uh, we can go ahead with uh, IP address client. and SSH so client in the sense. Uh, SSH now, SSH. in Windows, in, for Windows case, SSH client is Git bash okay. and even a putty. Okay. So, from here, we have to do so, uh, yes is java is working fine yeah working fine yeah. just use java and enter So I think we need to set the path for that. So Java is not needed for now. I mean, for doing SSH. Maybe once uh, end of the session, uh, once the session is over, we'll just look into this for a two to three minutes. Okay. Okay. Now try. Just... Yes. It is working here. Uh, yeah, because uh, uh, in a law previous path session, is. we have exported only Java underscore home with empty parameter. So session mm -hmm. was loaded with uh, empty Java parameter value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please proceed. So now, from please here, proceed now. we can give us a search. Example here. So it is the correct command here. Uh, the command is always correct when we copy from uh, the UI. But yeah, please check now. Proceed. Yes. Permission denied. And uh, the key which we are providing. Do you have the key in that particular folder right now where you are in? We need to provide no. a yeah, okay. we need to provide an absolute path. Okay, I'll copy this in that folder. Instead, you can refer this folder. Okay. How can we refer? I mean, uh, CD. SSH or something, uh, where, uh, wherever you are in, you can just do SSH iPhone I followed by the PIM key location. Double quotes. The PIM key and uh, no PIM key download slash renica dot PIM okay. The name you want, yes. We should provide our uh, PIM key uh, a name slash. We should give or else double quotes slash. You have already given after downloads. And followed by, uh, it won't do SSH to directly the remote machine, right? We need to provide a username at IP address. Uh, can okay. you check above uh, command? It's a EC2 iPhone user at the rate EC2 iPhone 3.9 something. Yeah, copy that.
is give a space control c Now you can use a PWD and who am I? Uh, can you maximize your uh, what do we say terminal once? It, it is, is okay nice. for me, but for maybe uh, uh, there is a zoom option, I think, even for. Uh, windows right click on top uh, menu bar and is there any options window Uh, Zoom Can option is available for uh, all because I used to option. I used to take that option. Zoom from go. Uh, yeah, you can do. Okay. Uh, in the right corner, yeah, yeah, yeah. we will be having plus fit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they will use that then. So, uh, who am in I, the bottom uh, right in the in the bottom right yeah guys you can find out the plus symbol with a screenshot option as well so you can just uh, uh, maximize or minimize zoom in or zoom out three yeah, different words who am I yeah so this is who am I or we can use okay. a single word who am I? Okay. Is it a user? Okay, now you have uh, associated into the EC2 user. Okay. Is this a hyphen? You have, you have already there. Yeah, you're in AC2 machine. Okay, yes. Okay. And when you okay. do that PWD, and uh, you can see that you're in EC home slash EC2 user. And this particular context also changed to a remote IP address, user yes. at the rate IP address. And directly you can switch uh, from here to uh, one user to another user sudo su okay it will switch to the root user and okay. you can see there a dollar option uh, where mou our mouse is blinking okay. when you switch to the root user uh, it will be move it will be hash symbol mm -hmm. for root user for super user okay okay so and uh, so do you have any doubts yeah from putty uh, it will be okay i mean in both ways so just open up it. just open up putty okay and, and IP here address. i have a question uh -huh. yes oh so for windows laptop uh, we're still using the putty to connect the terminal or i mean uh no actually i uh, recently I haven't seen uh, anyone is using that uh, under okay. some uh, legacy systems or some banking people they're using but mostly uh, people used to do with uh, mobile xtem in worst case git bash okay 
a mobile extreme is very handy uh, when we want to maintain a multiple sessions and we want to save environment to environment even we can do that in uh, putty but it is very user friendly mobile extrem okay we need to provide a user it user it yeah are you user we can i mean user in the sense easy to use the username it if it is ubuntu ubuntu 8 it won't allow you to copy just to click out outside Okay. This is a Python user. Okay. It. Any slash? It. It. Okay. In SSH section, uh, in a under connections, in the left side, there is a session terminal window and a connection. So there is an option SSH, the last one, connections. In connection section as such yes uh, we need to provide our key somewhere remote command key we have to open this file oh no actually we can load directly from here Please open this as a switch. Enable comparison. Can you expand this as a switch option? The Le -le left side. Okay. Auth section. A U T H. Fourth option. Okay. You select the fourth option. Auth. Okay. And now, one second, somewhere we can upload it here. Yes, in browse section. Hello, Rajendra. Yeah, we need to convert the PEM key to PPK. Yeah, please. Hi, is it working on PEM key? No, it won't hello. Uh, uh, allow. Yeah, we need to convert to PPK. Okay. Right. Okay. And one more uh, sorry. You can mention to EC2 user. Okay. Yeah, please. It's particularly, EC2 right. is mentioned for T IP address. EC2 user uh, IP public IP. Okay. Particularly mentioned. Uh, yeah, it was already mentioned there. So you are asking, uh, do we need to mention? Yes. yes. Yeah. In that case, we we don't need to mention. If you want to directly log in uh, with the EC2 user, we are just providing okay. EC2 user at the rate IP address. So rather, what we can do, we can just give IP address. Then once we try to connect, and it will ask you the username in a prompt. Okay. We need to provide a username. Okay. Uh, I think for uh, actually we need to have a putty gen. Could you please download a putty gen? I've done this putty for gen. long back. Yeah, in a browser. Putty gen. Yes. That is just a utility to convert a PPK or PEM key to PPK. Mm -hmm. So what Putty will do? Putty doesn't understand the PEM key directly. So for that, we are generating a PPK. So you can download it. It is a Putty. Uh, just search for Putty Zen.
no 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 scroll in the same page uh you can just search for putigen for windows okay okay uh, here you can see in a left side content putigen on windows yes this one yeah close it close close it's add Yeah, the last one. Just to scroll up. Little bit. Just to scroll up. Oh, here, good region. Yes. Where is the download option? Click here to download. Oh, yes. Oh, there is a load option, right? The second one. Okay. We can load our uh, PIM key. So load uh, here the file format we have to modify and just select the downloads and you know in the bottom in the bottom instead of putty private key file so we need to mention a PIM file load just be just beside a, a file name here in the bottom just beside there is an option putty private key scroll down yeah, all files now we can see PIM key we need to select successfully loaded one second okay. and there is an option to import uh, generate yeah generate so from PIM we are generating PPK guys to just to give you context on that uh, why uh, Renuka is doing this from PIM key to PPK so putty doesn't understand uh, the input format of our uh, key authentication which is already there with PIM so it doesn't understand for that we are generating a PPK key format to under to understandable format of a putty one second on and we can save save private key yes Yes, any name is fine. Now we can close this. Okay. So uh, here we have to and uh, we have to browse that. Accept.
Just open a putigen uh, putigen. Yes, open. Just load. Load. And a PIM file, no, no. PIM. PIM, okay. Yeah, we need to list all the files. So PIM file. Mm -hmm. One second, I'm just looking for Yeah, just load that. And one second before that, yeah. maybe maybe we need to generate it. I'm just googling about that. We don't do this very often. And okay, save private key. Okay, yes. Okay. File name. Just to give any, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Save. Yeah. yeah, save. And now we can try to do the SSH. Just use IP address here. Let's see. We, we need to load the key. Just check whether we have loaded or not. Select out. It is asking for login as. Yeah, easy to use, sir. Okay. Uh, I can use it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it so is now it has imported successfully. So previously also we have uh, followed this only, right? But uh, maybe I'm not sure. Maybe we might. Okay, uh, the earlier failure with a EC2 user only or with a different username? Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, in the IP address bar, we have given 
user as ec2 user and followed by ip address okay now you can close and try to connect with the same process ec2 if in user it ip address now we get to know we can maybe we have given it as in double quotes so that's why it is not Oh, I didn't see that. We have, uh, have you given in double quotes? Yeah. No, previously. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that was given. the reason. Okay. EC2 hyphen user at the rate IP address. Okay. Then SSH at blocks. Okay. I think there is an option to set this uh, PPK as a permanent instead of loading every time uh, that you can yeah, check no, later. But mostly try to use a git bash. Okay. Or a mobile X term. Okay. So uh, yeah, now we can see here uh, whether our regular tools are installed or not, like a Python, Java. Okay. Uh, anytime, if you uh, you know, if you uh, heard any noise from my side, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, please. Go. And you can check for Python versions and Java versions there in EC2 machine. It is not taking any uh, session timed out might be because uh, this particular session was ideal for a long time and you can try with a uh, putty in putty uh, you have already opened the session And a okay. Python. No. Just only use a Python. Python enter. Okay. And uh, we can switch to the new user now. Uh, root user. Okay. We have to so this is the temporary it. user. Yep. Okay, so sudo so root user we can give. No need. By default, it will take a root user, so no need to enter. Okay. And uh, uh, you can see where you are in. Just to maximize this putty. Okay. In home directory, it is. Oh yeah. Try to install one second. Try to install our uh, Jenkins. Jenkins. From here we can. Okay, install. not a Jenkins. Yeah, we can do that. That uh, anyway. Uh, try to install a Java for now. Okay, so you have to give uh, the path here. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And before that, let me just share you uh, my screen. Okay. And I will explain uh, the basic installation process for uh, any environment. Okay. See, uh, since we are able to log into the uh, any environment like EC2 machine, just think like uh, that is an environment that is in a dev server uh, for a particular microservice login service and we want to set up or something that is in a continuous integration server we want to set up the particular java edition this is an ec2 machine and I would like to install my JDK Java development kit or 
JRE is fine. JRE is fine for uh, when whenever we are deploying our application, not like for a development and dev environment or for a developer environment. So JRE or a JDK, I'm going to install, and then followed by we'll try to look for what is the version which which is it has, and before that. So uh, how many ways of installing any application? Now in installation, one more second. So is it visible guys? Hello. Yes, Rajan. Yeah, it's fine, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, any software installation, uh, irrespective of uh, operating system or a flavor, package installation, just to give me a second. Yeah, any package installation. Package is nothing but we can treat as a software. In our case, a VLC media player or WhatsApp desktop. In general, in a real time, JDK or Apache, whatever application softwares, application dependencies, in this case of Python, or open JDK any other custom uh, built uh, libraries and uh, open SSH there are many more so any software or a package which we wanted to install docker I want to install or ansible I'm going to install so these are just the softwares and I want to install these softwares on my MacBook, on my Windows, on my Linux distributions. Okay, Ubuntu or Red Hat, CentOS, some etc. So Fedora, there are many more. So we mostly use a Red Hat and a Ubuntu. So this case, whatever the software which we are going to install, you might have seen mostly since we are using a Windows based applications, our Windows based operating system. So we will be seeing this exe or msi for dot msi files. And in general, these are for Windows. When it comes to mobiles, it will be dot apk and for a Mac DMG or app. Once it is extracted, it will be dot app, I think. So for Windows, it is a exe and MSI packages. If you want to install a package, which is already packaged in the form of target machine understandable, like what, what does that mean? So imagine this particular Apache I have downloaded from the uh, internet and I have extracted the folder and now I can see I have multiple folders and files inside my Apache Tomcat server. This is in a tar bundle, tar.zz bundle. So when it comes to the where, 
this is a different terminology of a packaging and let me just list out somewhere mac related thing so now you can see android file transfer is in a mac distribution dot dmg and it when i double click on that it is asking me to copy and if you see the file name there android file transfer dot app so from any application i want to install on my macbook it should be dot app so i need to transfer this to applications the by default installation will be done so i'm just skipping that so likewise based on environment our operating system the package installation package will vary so now this case whatsapp desktop i'm uh, i'm downloading and installing onto my windows i might download this .exe file If you see there, it has downloaded WhatsApp setup.exe, and when I double click on that on Windows machine, it will ask next, next, next. Once the installation is finished, it will install on our uh, local machine, which is in our file system. Any time when you search for WhatsApp, it will just dis display there, so that we can utilize our application, like uh, just seen on our uh, Renuka machine. She has installed a putty gen right away there and she has downloaded a putty also. So once the download is over, we can install it. We can utilize for regular day to day purpose. Likewise, when we are dealing with the command line operating systems like Linux and we want to install any software, everything has to be done through the command line and any software installation can be done in a multiple formats like for windows based applications exe or msi i have so when i double click on this particular packages it will ask next next so that installation will be completed so what about uh, the binaries binaries is nothing but a package of a software which can be supported on any platform for example ZDK, Apache Tomcat, or Nginx, any software which industry utilizes mostly. So that can be installed with the help of the default package manager or with the help of binaries. So the default package manager, package manager is something red hat m repository for ubuntu it is a apt get it is an other sort of admin commands where we can install our application or remove our applications or list out our applications what I exactly meant by that and in in my macbook case it is homebrew so uh, if you see on my screen brew install python so instead of downloading a package myself so what i'm doing I'm just trying to install a Python package with the help of my package manager. It will try to download the packages from the internet. So it is throwing an error. The following directories are not writable by this user. Since I don't have a permissions to write this particular user local lib package config,
a package config and one second i'm getting a call sorry Yeah, sorry. So uh, it is unable to install a Python package because previously it is already there, but uh, it is trying to upgrade existing packages. Since I don't have a write permissions, it is throwing error. But uh, for you, it will it will get success. And it is asking me to change the owner. So I'm not going to change the owner. So I just I just want to leave as it is. That is how a package manager works. And in Ubuntu case, Ubuntu case, we have to use apt get install Python. Or for Red Hat case, we have to install Python m install Python. So these are package managers. So uh, instead of downloading and installing our software so it will directly download from the internet and it will install the package in default installation locations so why we want to go with the custom like a binaries since this is a single command it is going to install our software either jdk or the any dependent software or some other softwares so why we are always depending on a binaries most of the times because if we install any package with m or apt or a brew install it is going to sit in some a uh, user profile locations like uh, if you see user locally package configuration which i don't have access but i want to utilize the python what i can do i can download the binaries which are already compiled and ready to be run so it is not a something a target packaged system like it is not a exi it is not msi or a jdk or a, sorry or a apk or a dmz so this is not a, a target platform package rather it is in just a binaries like a folders now this case i have downloaded a tomcat 
binary so if you see here a tomcat binary when you extract it has a default folders this is how we used to get a tomcat even when you install tomcat with the help of either m or a brew you will get the same kind of a folder structure but in a different locations as i have shown in user local lib there might be a one work folder the web apps folder will rely on somewhere in a, a var or opt location the stem file or log files will be moved to somewhere in a var logs folder somewhere in a var logs folder so uh, this is how it will extract when we do when we install with the default package manager that's why uh, mostly we don't use a default package managers but our practice purpose and some situations if you want to install any libraries and in that situation we can install the package managers uh, with the help of package managers and for jdk or apache or nginx or some x softwares mostly we use a binaries in this situation let's install a jdk so any doubts in a packaging process packaging process in the sense the installation process one is with directly target machine installable format that means exes or msis or any dmg or dot app or apk which is only when you are downloading this apk this is only made for mobile when we are downloading exe it is only made for windows so this is a platform specific installable package and when it comes to binaries this is just an a zip file or a bundle where you can extract on any target operating system flavor either linux or windows or mac os irrespective of operating system flavor we can install our we can configure our binaries our software with the help of binaries so this is a two types of installation process and the third type is the type one is with the package manager and uh, second one is with the binaries this is not a order so i'm just giving you an overview and third one what we can say with a platform specific package like exe dot deb debian dot rpms for red hat for debian dpkg for ubuntu so uh, basically this packaging we should be aware i mean the terminology the extensions dot deb dot dpkg dot rpm just have this on a brain uh, and coming to the packages this is just uh, uh, what we say this particular tar bundle it can be a tar or gzip file tar tar dot gzip file there are many other formats like a zip for windows so or a dot rar file so these are formats for binary and these are formats for platform specific packages and when it comes to the first one the package manager with the help of any default command of a specific a target operating system like for red hat m for ubuntu apt for mac brew install so these are commands for installing a package it will be installed in a default locations of a operating system so i don't want to install any of my softwares in randomly in my system and instead i want to use my binaries 
so binary is something it will just take out and download and extract it into a, some folder from that we can utilize so i don't want my temporary files or long files to be rely on different locations of my file system and i want my whole application server or any of the software nginx or apache to sit on a particular file folder location or a particular installation location i will use this binaries option so this is a, a types of installations or a packages we have so in this situation now rinka gar me screen share chestara hello guys can you hear me oh yes we can hear yes. you oh uh, so renuka unnara like unde sandhya meeku account unda ah uh, undi so uh, everyone ipudu మిషన్ లాంచ్ చేస్తున్నారా ఎనీబడి సెషన్ లో ఎవరైనా అంటే మీ మిషన్ లో చేస్తే అర్థం అవుతదా ఎనీ మిని ఓకే ఓకే ఆ టర్మినేట్ చేస్తున్నా ఓ ఓకే ఓకే సో లెట్ మీ ఓపెన్ ఇన్ మై మిషన్ దెన్ I can share mine if you want. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, one Uh, since we have already occupied most of the time uh, maybe tomorrow we'll complete our linux commands and uh, the remaining session uh, we will proceed on our git basics about git introduction and all guys what do you think if you move this like in just 30 minutes uh, 30 minutes early like 8 o'clock yes it is fine okay. let's discuss yeah, that in uh, our for me also. since everybody is connecting from a uh, remote uh, maybe we can make it out for 8 o'clock because it is overlapping our office timings for most of the people so this for you yeah i'm good i'm good to join <laughs> okay and i will discuss this with uh, bharat and uh, if anybody is having a concerns let's see the thing is i have 1137 right now <laughs> okay but later on maybe after um let me check my calendar it is even fine to do it at 7:30 yeah <laughs> yeah maybe after one week later uh 
uh, the time will change for me. So <laughs> let's say right now I have around 38. After one week, um, maybe I have 12, 38 in the night. Oh. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> okay, we'll plan accordingly. Yeah. Do you want me to share my screen or? Uh, Ritwik is sharing, I think. Ritwik, I have okay, made you no. a presenter. Okay, no worries. Uh, no, Rajendra. Like I'm, I have connected from mobile. Okay, okay, then no issue. Okay. Uh, let me okay. let me present it then. Okay. Uh, Rajendra, what is the difference between stopping the instance uh, versus terminating the instance? Basically, stop can be uh, resumed, I think. For yeah. termination, we cannot resume the instance. So, yes, I mean, for yeah, even charges, when we terminate, we have to relaunch, right? Yes. For unincurring charges, maybe for a stopped instance also, it will be charged, but I'm not sure. Uh, oh, really? For our storage, for charges. For if mm -hmm. we terminate, we don't get charges. And uh, for the instance which we have stopped, maybe it will incur your uh, charges. I mean, for our free account, right? Sound 50 hours. Maybe it will consume that. I'm not sure. So let me check. So now I'm connecting my machine. So now I'm in a remote machine. I have no Java installed. And so this can you mute? So this are Ritwik, I think. So uh, when I try to uh, look for in a Java command, it is simply throwing nothing, uh, an error. Java is not found, but can be installed with. It is throwing some suggestions. sudo apt install openjdk and sudo apt install jre. And what exactly this sudo and we have a discussion yesterday. sudo is a command to use my particular user to get super privileges, to get root privileges, to perform this particular command. So to perform apt install command, I need a super privileges. That's where I'm using a sudo. And for a root user, I don't need to be used this particular sudo. I can directly use apt install or m install any of the command that I'm uh, I will be using.
and in my local when I type Java it is showing yeah it is working fine Java 17 is my current Java version which I have set up which is there in user bin which was by default installed that's why it was installed in user bin Java location if at all I want to install this particular package sorry I will download the package and I will set the path to this particular location so I have nothing set up for a Java home if at all I want to use my custom binary like extracted file I need to extract the file and I need to specify my system or my terminal or my shell this is something we call it as a terminal or a shell so when we are operating any uh, Linux flavors the communication as I shown you on yesterday's uh, section one second let me go back the kernel and how a shell will be interacted to the kernel and how our applications will interact to the shell let's say in a user one right now I'm the user and I'm trying to use my Java version and I'm getting a result so shell knows where to check this particular Java command by default uh, let's say I'm using a ls So any command which we are typing on a Linux terminal which which would have been already installed in bin location ls lrt is a binary which was already installed pre-installed with the operating system ls is a command for us but it is an utility or a software for an operating system So if, if you see here cat ch mode bash cp csh date command dd df echo everything is an utility and we are using the utilities or those libraries as a commands and all this mkdir mmo and ls and creating a soft links and ksh kill or a host name these are a regular things or regular commands which we use so most of the commands which are already installed in slash bin folder which is a pre-packaged in operating system and you want to perform any default and you can see there is no java here so my custom package java was not installed in default system installed packages slash bin rather it was there it user bin like user related binaries these are a system related binaries when operating system is bundled these are default commands or utilities and sorry and for user related binaries we can see here let me just list out what's there in user binaries So my user related uh, calendars and there are many things let me just uh, filter it out JDK so what I have used here grip I don't want to see all of these results and I just want to get only particular result from my previous command let's say LS is listing out 100 files or 200 files or a thousand files and you don't want all of them and you want to 
look for only Java and the other particular list. From this thousand lines of output, I just want to get a particular string out of it or a particular result. I want to list only the file name which starts with Java or a result which starts with Java. And that's where I just list out here. And you can see Java was installed here in user bin location. Since uh, it was uh, initially, I have used this with a um, brew install Java. So it was installed in a global user bin location. And likewise, any software which we are using with a package manager, it will sit in this um, bin location. If it is a command line utility I want to use, it will sit in this particular location and for different machines in a different location. And let me just uh, install. This is my remote machine. And you can see anytime if you get a confusion where I'm executing my local commands and where I'm executing whether uh, I'm in my remote machine or not. And you can clearly see there is nothing a prefix in my command line. And for a remote machine, you can see a IP address with my user Ubuntu. This is the only segregation uh, that you can find out the difference between my local and a remote machine. And whenever you are revisiting the video for any confusions, uh, please make sure at this point. Now I'm installing in this case open JDK. This particular version it is going to install. And you can clearly see could not open a lock. For installing a DPKG package. What is trying to do it is trying to. Uh, look for this particular DPK uh, trying to access this particular varlib DPKG file, but it is failing to open since I don't have a permissions. And unable to acquire the DPKG front end lock. So for these kind of situations, if you encountered any errors straight away, you can Google with this error code. If you are aware. Then you can proceed with sudo so you have to switch to the root user and you have to install the software or if you want to install a software with this particular with the same user you can go ahead and use sudo sudo has a privileges to access this particular file since it is a root privileges So I have used the apt install sudo apt install with the open JDK version Java 11 JRE headless I'm installing. Uh, don't bother about this. What is a headless? What is a JRE? So this is just an a uh, Java open source uh, development kit I'm installing in my machine. So the only thing you have to remember is how we are installing any package. Oh, what are the need? What is the need of using a sudo and what is the need of using apt and which platform we need to use apt? So these are some basics and I'm just pressing no, I'm not installing now. Apt or apt get any command we can use. Earlier I have used only apt. Now I have used apt get. So it will listen on both either apt or apt get both commands will perform the same action in some articles uh, whenever you Google it for the, uh, any sort of errors uh, you can find out that apt get and somebody is replying with uh, only apt install. So both are the same. Now let me. Proceed for installation now it.
I'm giving S now. Before that, it is asking there are the many uh, libraries has to be updated or configured. The dependent dependency packages. I'm switching to the root user. I'm upgrading my packages. So just now I have used the apt get update iPhone Y. So if I don't use a Y, it will prompt me like, uh, do you want to proceed as or no? And with the default apt get and iPhone update, like how we used to update our Android phone software updates or regular, uh, even for our regular our WhatsApp or Facebook from the Play Store, we used to update it very often. So uh, like that, we used to update our packages and our libraries with the help of apt get iPhone update. So we don't use this update in general. I mean for an organization because whenever you are applying this particular apt get update. Now you can see there are many packages related to focal ports and. Uh, and you can see focal universe for AMD packages. Security related packages. This will be updated in our uh, machines. So we are not supposed to use APT updates or any other package update activities in our machines unless we have specified to update it from the uh, higher management or any planned maintenance or pa patching main maintenance activity windows. So we are not supposed to update our packages like we did in our local machines. Now I try to install a Java. It is showing unable to locate the package. Now if you see uh, the result again, it is suggesting to use the default command. Now it is able to download the Java package. Earlier it was a failed uh, because of the dependencies. Let me just uh, go back. Yeah, I have used the sudo apt install. Now I'm using only apt install JDK because I'm already root user. I don't want to use this sudo command. Now I'm running apt install open JDK and it is able to install. And earlier what happened? The following packages will be installed before installing our Java application or a Java package. CSR, Java and all this stuff. So that's where I have used apt update so that these packages will be updated to the latest versions and then I can use then followed by I'm downloading our package with the help of apt install Java or open JDK with a specific version. So now
you can see the open JDK which we have installed so the default JRE is a open JDK open JDK I'm exiting now from the root user let me try whether I'm able to our Ubuntu user is able to run this particular Java version I'm running this with my local uh, not local with a Ubuntu user I'm getting the same result so the software installed on a machine can be accessed by any of the user since everybody is having a read access for most of the uh, binaries when binary or a software or any utility was installed in a system level it can be accessed by any user by default and if you want to control the user software access and the installation location you need to specify you need to change the owners and uh, owners in the sense user bin so uh, in my user bin it has installed like in my local here also it was installed in my user bin now i have grip to see the result and here i have not used any grip rather i have used ls option itself to list out what is there with my java package in this particular user bin instead of using a grip I have used a single command to list out including filter filter is Java I want to list a file name which starts with Java J A, and star is something any name like a Jim like a John January any name which starts with J A, it will list out here so and uh, I'm talking about a permissions right so if I remove these permissions like this is an a link which is pointing to this particular installed location and then followed by my user is having a read write execute and others also having a read write execute and other groups groups also having a read write executions so uh, whenever you want to restrict the user level I can give apart from my user I can give all other users as just a, not even a read option I will just give a zero for them example seven zero zero basically this is something file permissions that we are giving for user level or a group level and for others now I try to change the permissions of this particular file and it is throwing me operation not permitted because I'm a Ubuntu user I don't have root privilege to handle with other user or uh, the root folders so I what I can do I can do only any operation inside my home Ubuntu folder but I cannot go ahead and do any actions related to the system configuration changes or user privilege changes anything I wanted to do I need to do inside my Ubuntu folder or inside my user space so I uh, I don't have a privileges to do any activity inside this user bin Java folder that's where I'm acquiring a pseudo permissions for my Ubuntu user now you can see it was executed let me just list out again so one second there is no change
and yeah since it is a soft link we're unable to change uh, the default permissions and for folders we can directly change the permissions uh, let me just show you that Seven double zero for this particular And you can see this particular user doesn't have a, a privileges to execute a Java since I have changed my uh, permissions to run only on a root user. Before that, file permissions. Write, read, and execute. So this uh, write, read, execute. Uh, we can see here uh, we have a permissions it is showing, but it is a soft link. That's where we are unable to um, access it. And we have restricted the permissions in a direct folder level. And I will tell you about what is a soft link and what is a hard link. And uh, to just brief you about that, a soft link, you can imagine like whenever you install your application, instead of uh, in your uh, Android phone or any uh, in your local desktop. So you used to create a shortcuts on Windows and for a la for mobiles, when you install your application, instead of going to uh, your main menu and scrolling down, where is a WhatsApp application, where is a Facebook, you used to keep on uh, your desktop directly on a home, either in the form of uh, widgets. So those can be a shortcuts or else soft links so that is just a reference to the original file so this is the original file location where my java was installed when i when i have done with uh, apt install j open jdk it was installed in this etc alternatives java location and it was referred to user bin java it is just a matter of creating a soft, a soft link. Let me just show you an example. Hello world. I'm writing to some test dot original dot txt. Let me display what is there inside original dot txt cat is a command to concatenate what is there inside my particular file so i have used the echo to print echo is a command where you, if you want to display something in a single line and cat is a command to display or the content of a file when you do cat of any file it will display everything if it is at 100 lines or a thousand lines any n number of lines it will just list out all the result and what I have done I have created a file with the name original.txt now I am creating a soft link to my this particular file I am mentioning name as a soft link Command is wrong. I have used ls instead of ln. ln is a link to create a soft link 
and now I'm just listing out whether my soft link was created or not. Now you can see a soft link was created to my original file and in this original .txt I have a content of hello world and let me just display what is the content inside my soft link. And my soft link also contains the same. Whatever it is there in original txt file, it will just replicate the same. And uh, imagine I'm going to append second line content to original file. Then I'm not editing anything to the soft link file. So I'm just displaying what is there inside the soft link. Now you can see any modifications which will be doing on a original file, it will be reflected here. So when we restrict this particular original uh, TXT file to access only particular users, so it won't be accessible. The soft link won't be accessible. That's what happened when we are trying to access a Java. It is throwing a permissions denied because I have restricted this particular Java command uh, the installation location not to use anybody apart from my user. Sudo so my root user can use the Java command. Now I'm getting a result. So yeah, I think we have reached out of a time. Uh, so any doubts, keep a note of it and we will discuss in tomorrow's uh, first uh, of our final session. Guys, is that, is that fine? Any doubts? Uh, just to keep a note and uh, ask me in the morning tomorrow. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, like if we get any errors like while executing, we'll post those things uh, in the group. Yeah, definitely. So I'll stop the recording.